Satanism. Adam Smith would talk about this. He said, it is the maxim of every prudent master of a family never to attempt to make at home what it will cost him more to make than to buy. All right, so it's interesting. That kind of hit close to home right here when he says every, I mean, private homes, why would you do something at home when it would be cheaper to do it elsewhere? I remember the day my father said, son, I'm going to teach you how to change the oil. You can save $19.95 by changing the oil yourself. Yes, Father, we are manly men. This is what we do is our patriarchal duty to change oil, okay? And it could be your matriarchal duty as well. I don't know, okay? So here I am going to go change oil. Now, I'm up underneath the vehicle. My father just pulled the vehicle up. We're going to save $19.95. Remember that? Megan, this is what we're doing, okay? Geographic specialization. We're specializing this in our driveway. My dad pulls the vehicle up. I get under the vehicle. My father has the oil pan under there. The, he points out the oil plug to me. Taylor, I am unscrewing the oil plug. As I'm unscrewing the oil plug, gravity kicks in and the oil begins to flow out into the oil pan. That was to be expected. Some of you look shocked by that. That, that was not the shocking part. So you're like, oh, it did? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. You okay, Shelby? All right. So we got that. Now, what was shocking to me, Shelby, is when the oil was a tinge bit warm because he just pulled the car up and the engine had been uh, running. Now, I did not expect that. It was not boiling. It did not melt my flesh from my hand. But that's what I thought was initially going to happen. So out of reaction, I dropped the oil plug into the oil pan. Now, wait, that's still not the bad part yet. I'm going to be saying that a lot in this story. Okay, so you dropped it in there, the oil drains, and then you roll your sleeve up and, and you just you fish for it. You get it. That's fine. Except for the fact that this oil pan had already a large amount of oil from the previous oil change, and it was beginning to overflow. Now, the only way to prevent this from overflowing was for me to stick my hand into the lava, find the oil plug, and stop the oil from draining, which I personally was not willing to do at that point. I seem to recall my father grabbing me by the ankle, pulling me out from underneath the car, my flesh still on the driveway to this day. He getting underneath the car, sticking his arm into the not quite as hot as lava, oil, finding it, stopping it up, Meanwhile, it looked like an oil tanker had exploded in my driveway. Oil everywhere. All right, so now we got to deal with this. We got newspapers out trying to soak it up. This is not working. My dad says, go get the pressure washer. We're going we're gonna to clean this off. Yes, Father, this is what we're going to do. He then looks at me. This is what he says. He goes, check the oil in the pressure washer. Yes, Father. Not change the oil, check it. Okay, I... Yes, it's got oil. He's using the pressure washer. It's really loud. It's like a helicopter right over you. And I'm watching it. Like, man, their pressure washer, it's a lot of smoke's coming off of it. Like, a lot. And then my dad, yelling over the... Why is there so much smoke coming off this? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so he, he turns it off and he looks and he... Did you check the oil? Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, sir. Did you put the oil cap back on? Okay, you did not tell me to do that. <laughs> okay, let's be a little bit more specific, Father, in our direction. Oh, boy, I... I think that 1995 we we say probably cost us I don't know four or five thousand dollars. It seems like in that oil change. Hey, sometimes let other people do it. Okay.